Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is Alex and I graduated from Stanford in mathematics and computer science. I'm a, I'm a data guy, I'm a software guy, but there are two things that I really love. The first is betting on sports and beating the sports books. And the second one is pretty related, but it's writing software to help myself bet on sports and beat the sports books. Um, I think why I've always been so fascinated by sports betting is unlike other forms of gambling like slots or roulette, in sports betting, you can actually have a mathematical profit margin over the sports book and win in the long term. And that's what these videos are gonna be about. We are going to talk about becoming a more data-driven, a more mathematical, and most importantly, a more profitable sports better. So there won't be any fancy graphics, no fluff, no BS, I'm not a movie producer, but I hope you watch until the end of this video because we are going to talk about key concepts to making money in sports betting. Now, me personally, I have profited over $400,000 since regulated sports betting came to the United States in 2018. I've never done it full time and I would never even consider doing it full time. And in this video, I'll try to weave in my experience to share, show, and prove to you everything that I am saying. Now, very briefly before we dive in, I wanna make very clear, I'm not saying that sports betting in the US or Canada is easy because it's absolutely not. I have spent thousands of hours building models to help myself bet on sports, writing software to identify line discrepancies and profitable betting opportunities. It is not easy, and sports betting is never going to be a game for the impatient, those who want to get rich quick, um, and even the slow. To be a great sports better, you have to be fast, disciplined, and also mathematical, um, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about. So before we dive in, we can take a look very briefly at one of my sportsbook accounts, um, DraftKings, just to see, you know, before I started Odds Jam, how seriously I was betting. So here we can see an example of what one of my many, many sportsbook um, accounts looks like. So this is my DraftKings, and there are nights between sportsbooks I've had over $50,000 bet spread across, you know, 35 plus bets all on bets that are mathematically profitable. So you'll see wins and losses here. Nobody wins every time. It's all about finding odds in your favor so that you win in the long run, right? It's kind of like investing. You won't win every day as a profitable better. Um, you obviously won't win every bet, but over the course of the long run, you will make money. Um, and for me, it's a pretty incredible feeling to know I have a mathematical profit margin in every bet that I place, um, sit back, and ultimately watch games and let the math work itself out to make me money. So yeah, pretty crazy account. The last thing I'll say before we dive in is that if you like this content, please like, please subscribe, please share. That's really the only way I know that this content is actually valuable to other people. Um, just aside from hearing myself talk, I'll also leave my email in the description and please do not hesitate to reach out with any questions. So concept one, um, this is the most important concept in sports betting and it is the realization that sports is a financial market, just like the stock market. My background is I worked as a quantitative trader on Wall Street and I understand this may sound very weird to some people, but in sports betting, it is not about sports. It is not about picking winners. It is about identifying inefficiencies and odds on US and Canadian, Canadian sports books and taking advantage of them. And there are a lot of inefficiencies on US and Canadian sports books. Now, when I say financial market, there are two important parts to that. The first is that sports book odds are not static. And second, they are determined by supply and demand and things can move quickly. Just like the you know price of GameStop stock can go from $160 one minute to $200 the next minute. In sports betting, it's exactly the same. If Kevin Durant gets injured, maybe the Nets in tonight's game go from minus 200 odds to minus 120 odds in a matter of minutes. Um, the Nets are less likely to win and that's reflected in the odds. At the same time, maybe Kyrie Irving is expected to have the ball more and his over 30 points goes from minus 110 odds to minus 210 odds. Um, again, Odds are constantly, constantly changing across bookmakers as new information is absorbed into the market and betters place bets. Um, supply and demand. So yeah, that's concept one. Sports betting is a financial market like all others. And this is really important to understand because 
Unlike other markets, the sports betting market is very inefficient. You have hundreds of bookmakers in this global ecosystem, largely setting odds independently, firing a bunch of algorithms, trying to balance supply and demand on both sides and update their odds. And this yields a lot of interesting inefficiencies, which we can look at right here. Here's an example from Odds Jam of just how crazy the sports betting market is. You have all these books running around trying to set their lines independently. So here we can see an example from the Yankees Twins game tomorrow. Um, you know, the Twins, for example, are plus 180 on BetMGM. They're plus 215 on Fox Bet. Could you ever imagine placing a bet? plus 180 odds on BetMGM. If you knew you were getting plus 215 on FoxBet, it's absurd. Um, now, if you think these discrepancies in odds, like the difference even between plus 200 and plus 215 is small, then there is a massive, massive flaw in your thinking. Um, sports betting is all about earning 1% to you know 7% profit margins on a daily basis and watching those returns compound and compound and compound. Um, you know, if you think about the stock market, people get rich investing in the stock market, which returns like 8% per year on average. So imagine if you could earn 3% per day in sports, right? That is the goal, earning a 3% return on capital every day in sports betting and watching your returns compound and compound and compound. Now, let me tell you that is never, never in your life going to happen if you're placing bets at plus 180 odds and plus 200 odds when there's another sports book in your location giving you plus 215 odds. These small differences or seemingly small differences in sports book odds in the line discrepancies add up to a lot, a lot of money in the long run. So this is kind of an example of what all these sports betting markets setting lines independently looks like um, in real time. So if you think about it, this difference in sports book odds is actually really fascinating and pretty mind boggling. Um, right? Like it doesn't happen in the stock market. It's not like I go to Robinhood versus E-Trade and I see a different price on Apple stock. It doesn't really make sense. But in sports, clicking one tab over from Barstool to BetMGM can really change your payout in a big way. So a lot of people may be wondering, well, that doesn't make much sense. Why do all these sports books have different odds? Why don't they just copy each other? And the reason for that, because it's a great question, is all sports books, they largely want to be unique. DraftKings, they don't want the same odds as FanDuel. They don't want the same odds as BetMGM or Pinnacle, right? We wouldn't need hundreds of sports books in this global sports betting ecosystem if every single sports book had the exact same odds. It wouldn't make sense. These sports books largely want to be unique, set their own lines, have their own models, and do it themselves. Um, from a sports betting perspective, it, it works in favor of the books because you need multiple sportsbook accounts to be successful. This is called line shopping and it's browsing odds between different bookmakers and only placing bets at the best possible odds. You do not want to get ripped off by sportsbooks. You should never be placing a bet on BetMGM at plus 145 odds if you can go one tab over in your state and place that bet on DraftKings at plus 160 odds. So line shopping is a very important concept in sports betting and doing it ruthlessly adds up to a lot of money in the long run. Don't get ripped off by the sports books. Only take bets on sports books that are offering you the best odds. Um, you know, there are like 50 plus regulated and offshore bookmakers in the US and Canada. You should have as many accounts as possible. It takes like two to three minutes to create an account. Um, when I was actively, actively really betting before I started Odds Jam, I had like 30 or 40 sportsbook accounts that I used. Um, you know, WinBet, PointsBet, William Hill, DraftKings, FanDuel, MGM, BetUS, tons of them. You never know when there's gonna be a great opportunity with great odds on a particular book. So having more books, it just increases the number of possible profitable betting opportunities that you can place. More books, the merrier, in my opinion. Um, the one thing we're not really gonna talk about in this video, but it's worth mentioning, is a lot of these sports books offer sign-up bonuses if you make an account with them. Um, DraftKings, FanDuel, Caesars, they all do it, right? And if you think about it, 
a lot of people think it's too good to be true. Like, how are these sports books giving me $1,000 to sign up? If you think about it, they're in ruthless competition with a ton of commodity businesses, right? These are all commodity businesses. They're sports books. They accept the wagers. DraftKings has to compete with FanDuel, has to compete with PointsBet, and they offer users like $1,000, $2,000 in free credits or some promotion to sign up. Um, so knowing how to do these sportsbook sign-up bonuses and promotions in a mathematically optimal way um, can actually lead you to a lot of money. So I started betting in Pennsylvania, but I went to New Jersey with a friend. I stayed in Hoboken, and I calculated at that time that New Jersey sign-up bonuses, if you knew how to do them right in a mathematically optimal way, between Caesars, William Hill, like you add up everything, um, we're talking about like five figures that you can make just from sign up bonuses alone in New Jersey. So I would recommend there are, there's a lot of content online about sign up bonuses, but if you have questions, you can also email us because this is one of the easiest ways to make money sports betting. So there's another reason that you are going to need multiple sports book accounts and that is limits. Um, Limits, 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 my least favorite word, but this is a question I get a lot from friends, former colleagues I've worked with is, well, if you're a profitable sports better, why can't you just bet bigger? In other words, if you have a 3% edge, you're betting $1,000 and you're getting $30 in expected return, why can't you just start betting bigger? And the reason is because of limits in the business model of US and Canadian sports books. Um, I'll be the first to break it to you. You're never gonna make a million dollars off of a US regulated or Canadian sports book. And the reason for that is limits. This is why sports betting is unscalable. And honestly, becoming a professional sports better is not lucrative. And everybody who claims to be a professional sports better is really just starting a company to try to sell you something. In sports betting, the sky is realistically not the limit because of bookmaker limits. Now, when I say limit, all I mean is if you start betting out on FanDuel, for example, when I started betting on FanDuel, I could place $5,000 per bet on basically anything. Um, if FanDuel determines that you are a winning better, a mathematically profitable better, that limit will slowly come down. Now I can barely bet more than $50 on FanDuel. And on the other hand, if you're losing better, the sports book will take your limit up. So basically you start out being able to bet a lot of money on all of these sports books, but if these sports books determine you are smart and mathematically profitable, these limits will slowly, slowly come down. And again, this is why you probably don't know anybody smart who is a professional sports better and why it's really an industry that attracts zero talent and technical people. It's solely because of limits. Regulated sports books are not in the business of taking people's money who are smart. Um, they are in the business of limiting people who are smart and keeping around the losers. That's just how the industry works. And that also means if you know people who claim to be really great bettors, but they're not getting limited, they're probably just not profitable. Getting limited is oddly a sign of success. Um, I'll be very clear here. Limits are a function of profitability. I've run models to prop bet. That's gotten me limited. I've obviously written software to identify line discrepancies. That has gotten me limited. If you are making money, you will inevitably get limited. And at the same time, if you think you're making money and you aren't getting limited, you know, maybe track your bets and get your exact profit and loss because you probably aren't making money. Um, yeah, I've personally been limited by almost 20 bookmakers at this point, which is pretty crazy. But again, it's just part of the game. This is just how the industry works. Sportsbooks are in the business of limiting winners and keeping around the losers. Um, this isn't meant to discourage anybody from betting on sports. Obviously, sports betting is really fun, especially if you're making money and it can still be lucrative. It's just to say that you're probably never going to make $400,000, $300,000 off of one sports book. You're going to get limited well before that. The goal is to make 20,000 maybe off of five, 10 or 15 sports books. That is really your goal here. The power is in the number of sports books you have. And again, with this crazy wave of regulation and legalization in the US as well as Canada, there are a lot of different bookmakers you can get. So do their sign up bonuses, take advantage of them, make as much money as you can, but you will lose some accounts. Um, like again, here we can see my FanDuel profit. 38,000, not terrible, but I can tell you, this will never probably even pass 50,000. 
because I can barely even place a bet on the product anymore. Um, the powers and the number of books you have. One final point I'll leave you with because it's kind of fun, kind of interesting, is in the US, different states have different sports books. For example, I'm in Virginia right now, so there's WinBet, I can bet on WinBet. If I'm in Pennsylvania, I can't. So long story short, you do not need to physically live in a state to bet on that sports states on that state's sports books. You do not need to live in the particular state. Um, so I actually, you know, I've spent some time traveling. Like when I've been in Nashville, Tennessee, I've created the sports book accounts, done the sign up promotions or Vegas. So I highly recommend if you are traveling, check if you're in a regulated location. And if you are, you can still bet on sports, at least take advantage of the sign up bonuses and have some fun sports betting while you're there. So we can go through a really quick use case of line shopping. So basically there was this FanDuel promo and you know I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but on every Tuesday you wanted to go through in every single baseball game, every single baseball game on Tuesday, you wanted to bet $25 on a player to hit a home run. Essentially, you were given some bonus if you did this. So every Tuesday, you know, a bunch of people would be talking about who should I bet on FanDuel, you know, for this specific game to hit a home run. So let's go over a simple use case of line shopping and just kind of see how easy it is. Um, so what we can see here is it's pretty late at night, so we see only three books have posted player to hit a home run, markets for tomorrow, but this is the Reds-Marlins game. So let's say you wanted to get a head start. What you'd want to do is look for players where FanDuel is simply offering you the best odds, right? Why would you ever place your promotion bet on Alex Jackson over 0.5 home runs? So to hit a home run plus 300, when Pinnacle Sportsbook, the sharpest sportsbook in the world, which is on the Odds Jam plus EV page, is giving you plus 359, right? This plus 300 is pretty clearly a crappy bet. So all you want to do essentially is look for ones like this right? Like this one is great. Here we see FanDuel is offering you the best odds, plus 230 odds, and that's on Joey Votto to hit a home run. He's obviously been pretty hot. The odds are better than Betfair. The odds are better than Pinnacle. So maybe Joey Votto is a good choice, or maybe Sanchez is a good choice, plus 440. This one also maybe Kyle Farmer, plus 550. He's only plus 500 to hit a home run on Betfair, and only plus 437 on Pinnacle. So this is a pretty powerful tool because essentially if you would have selected the best lines from FanDuel over the course of the promotion, you would have netted over $2,500 just from this one specific promotion on FanDuel in betting the best home run lines. Um, so in my opinion, this is really what I love about data-driven software products, right? No one can argue with live real-time odds. This isn't a BS model. This isn't BS picks, right? This is literally real-time data, and the way you know you are getting good odds and you are making a good bet on FanDuel for this promotion is you place bets where FanDuel is offering you the best odds on that player to hit a home run. So in this video, we talked about the fact that if you want to make money sports betting, you are going to need multiple sportsbook accounts, and you are going to need to line shop ruthlessly. Again, the point of sports betting is earning like 2% returns, 3% returns on a daily basis and watching those returns compound and compound and compound. Now, what's really interesting is if you think about all the different sportsbook accounts you could get in New Jersey, then if you think about all the offshore books like Bovada, BetUS, if you add up the total amount of odds on these sites at any given time, we are talking about millions and millions and millions of odds. And it's a lot. These odds are always moving as we kind of talked about. So in my opinion, at least, it's nearly impossible to find good bets manually. It's not going to happen. Odds are always changing. Good lines don't last forever. Um, anybody who's made serious money sports betting will tell you you need good software if you actually expect to profit in sports betting. Um, that's why I initially built Odds Jam, right? I wanted to make software to save myself time and make myself more money. Um, of course, at this point, I've been limited by basically every sports book. It's not as useful for me, but hopefully for you, you know, it can save you time and make you money. We process millions and millions of odds every single minute, powered by hundreds of hundreds of servers to show you some of the best betting opportunities, as well as live odds from around the world. It's a pretty powerful tool. 
because there's no fluff, no BS, no BS picks, no BS models. We just build tools based on real-time odds. And what's better than building tools based on real market data? Um, we also power a lot of companies in the industry through our real-time API of live odds. So I encourage you, we'll talk about OddsJam more in other videos, but to check it out, we have a lot of free features, a bet tracker, free line shopping, and just see if it's something that can improve your betting game. Even just line shopping, if you are betting on sports, just make sure you are getting the best possible odds and you are not getting ripped off by the sports books. Um, it's really important. And at OddsJam, we're just getting started. We are building tons of new tools based on live odds from around the world, paired with historical data, to build some insanely, insanely useful tools for our users, we hope. Um, so a lot of really cool things coming with Odds Jam, trying to bring really the best of Silicon Valley engineering directly into a sports betting product for retail sports bettors in the US as well as Canada. Um, so that's a bit about Odds Jam. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, if you wanna hear about more topics, odds boosts, promotions, signup bonuses, I mean, whatever it is, feel free to email me or just comment, like, share, subscribe. It's good feedback for us that this content's actually valuable to other people and other people are interested in actually making money sports betting. So again, thank you for your time. My name's Alex and until the next one.